presenting feature is epilepsy. And how do we diagnose epilepsy today? So we actually have Ingo Helbig and Ahmed Abu Tayun. Um, Ahmed is, in our, is on, in our division, and they've been working on epilepsy diagnosis. And they have put together a number of reviews on this now. There are hundreds of genes for epilepsy. So when a child is diagnosed with, um, when a child is starting to have seizures and you want to do diagnosis, they look at hundreds of genes. And this was a review that they put together showing you since 1995 all of the different genes that have been identified for epilepsy diagnosis. This, um, this work is done since the Human Genome Project started so that we were able to find all of these new and different types of genes that cause epilepsy. None of these, of course, are related to ring chromosome 20, but there are hundreds of genes that cause epilepsy. So if a patient appears who has epilepsy, 15 to 20 percent of patients are going to have mutations in some of, these new, some of these genes that have been established. We are still finding new genes for epilepsy every day. So another 5 to 10 percent are going to have these new genes. No, there, there are no genes that a lot of patients have. So epilepsy is a really hard thing to diagnose because there are so many different reasons that you can have epilepsy. And the types of seizures and some of the accompanying features are very different from one to the next. And as Ingo points out, Ingo is a neurologist who does a lot of epilepsy research. When he sees a patient with seizures, he usually cannot guess what their cause is going to be. So the neurologists tell us that it's very hard to diagnose, um, to diagnose epilepsy. And I just read um, on the plane right here, and I, I didn't have time to put it into any of my slides, I read a new paper that just came out talking about 670 patients who were newly diagnosed with epilepsy. They did genetic testing on a little over 300 of them. These were all patients who had early onset epilepsy before the age of three. They found, and they did all of these different tests, 57 of them had chromosome analysis, there were no cases of ring chromosome 20 in that test, D diagnosis before the age of three. So this is a really complicated field, and part of us has always been very frustrated that ring chromosome 20 gets underdiagnosed, but it's not really surprising given the complexity. 